Welcome to a new video in my home automation playlist and today it's going to be another Modbus MQTT um, Arduino firmware type of videos. Um, since I was working on my Grovat Solar Inverter to MQTT Converter, I thought, well, maybe this is a good time since I'm already into, you know, making codes, that I just adapt the previous code and I create a new sketch which can talk to this uh, current uh, converter or current monitor. So this is something that I received uh, recently from AliExpress. And uh, as you can see here, this is a 16-channel uh, current monitoring sort of device. So it's this box and it comes with these 16, you can see them here, 16 current converters. Um, what is it? Um, current transformers, I think it's called. And, um, and so it measures the, the current uh, on 16 different channels and then it has a Modbus output and that's pretty much it. So I'm just using my uh, Modbus board that I have it here. So it's an e uh, ESP8266 with an RS-285 connector. And I'm converting everything to MQTT, which you can see here. So I'm getting all the information from the, um, from the device, which is basically like 16 amp measurements. Ah, you can see here from Z C01 to C16. And I've just used, uh, I've just connected two of the current clamps and they are connected to, um, I mean, that's my extension lead and my laptop is running off uh, from this cable. So one is just connected to neutral, the other one is connected to live. And uh, there is no particular reason why I did that. I just uh, connected the first one to the first input and the last one to the last input so I could test that you know, the code is working correctly and I'm able to read all 16 channels without any issues. So this is what this video is going to be about, how you can buy this, how you wire this, and you know, how you can build your code uh, or basically just flash the firmware for this ESP. And by the way, everything is going to be a GitHub. I haven't created the GitHub page for this yet, but uh, that would happen once I, uh, you know, by the time I received the, or released the video. So first, maybe what we can do is look at the um, listing. So this is the AliExpress listing, and this device is available in four different types. So the current transformer can be, um, so is the type 1 to type 3, and if you scroll down, you can see the various types. Yeah, so type 1 comes with a um, 40 amp current um, converter, and that is the type that I have here. So it's this uh, closed type. So you have to feed the, fire, uh, the wire through. And then, actually, let me change this view. Yeah, so the type two is an 80 amp. Uh, and then type three is a 40 amp, but the ones that you can clamp on a cable and, and type four is 120 amp. And I choose the uh, 40 amp because that's the, uh, well, first of all, that was the cheapest one and I didn't want the more range, and um, I mean, I'm going to have this uh, installed permanently, so I don't care that I can't easily unclamp it from the cable, so that's fine. And you can read the rest of the uh, documentation here. It runs from like this wide DC volt range, and I'm powering mine from 24 volts at the moment. And it also talks about the Modbus protocol that it supports, and it also, uh, there is a Chinese thing for the Modbus protocol, and I mean, I just use Google Translate to translate. It is very straightforward. So uh, yeah, there is nothing special about that. And if I go over to the unit like this, now you can see that everything is clear labeled. So it is very, very simple. You have the power uh, in these two terminals. So power plus minus, there is an, um, a ground connection as well. You have the A and a B connection for the RS-485. And then you have all the connections for the 16 channel. So you have um, um, the, the, the first channel here. So S1A and S2A. So that's the first current clamp. And SP, sorry, S, SA1 and SA2. And SP1 and SP2 is channel 16. So you have all these connections. And of course, in the box, you have 16 of these current clamps provided. Uh, I just only used two for these demonstration purposes. And by the way, you can see it here, but there is a DIN rail mount on this. There are also screw mounts. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to mount it, but uh, we'll get to that at some point. 
And on the Arduino side, sorry, on the ESP side, so I'm using a VMOS D1 Mini and I'm using this particular RS4852 TTI converter and I also have some mains logic here, sorry, mains power supply here, which I think I'm not going to use for this particular case because this anyway needs 24 volts. So I think I'm just going to use a small buck converter to convert the 24 volts down to 5 volts for the ESP. And I have a PCB project uh, for this particular PCB. So if you want that, you can um, order it from PCB way. And that's also going to be in the GitHub. Let's have a quick word about the Arduino code. Although I haven't uh, made an awful lot of changes from the GrowWatt inverter, I kept the basic logic how it, you know, connects to the wireless and the settings and, uh, for example, the status messages. Uh, basically, I, I changed what I'm reading from the Modbus device because this is obviously a different Modbus device and what I send over in the MQTT. And I've also decided not to read a fair bit of registers and data for a couple of reasons. If you translate this to English, you can see that there is some information here how it measures uh, frequency and some settings as well. But to be honest, it didn't make an awful lot of sense for me what, what it is about. And maybe there is some technical details how frequency is measured. And as you can see here in uh, from register 24 to 39, it's supposed to send the frequency on all 16 uh, channels as well. But for me, it was always sending zero, so I just ignored it. I ignored it, anything which is related to uh, frequency. So what I decided to keep, as you can see here, I have a version information, I have um, some sort of range. So it looks like that they are selling the same unit for the 80 or 120 amp current transformer, and probably it is pre-configured in the factory, uh, whether it's using the 80 or a um, you know, sorry, 40, 80 or 120 current transformer. So I wanted to get this data out so you can make sure that your unit or you have the current transformers, what the unit expects. So it's showing me 80, 80. There is a different range for inputs A to H and I to P. But uh, so that should match with whatever you ordered. And then basically from that onwards, you get uh, values C01 to C16, which is the 16 inputs and these are amps. So at the moment I'm drawing 260 milliamps, 250 milliamps. And as you can see, you know, the readings are fairly good. And uh, this is my laptop charger and, and the light which is illuminating this setting. That's how much it draws. And um, yeah, it's, you know, it doesn't uh, go bad. Uh, there is no, you know, values jumping up and down. Uh, probably this could be like the, um, the laptop charging. I mean, the battery is 100% at the moment, so probably it's not charging a lot. But I think it is fairly accurate because if I, let me change on another LED studio, like a studio light, but it's a sort of a low power studio light. I just need to find the switch. Okay, so another one is on and uh, the readings are coming every, I think it's five seconds, something like that. So you can see that um, from 250, we are up to 350. So that's another 100 milliamps. So it is, you know, definitely sensitive enough so you can um, get, you know, fine measurements. Well, at least fine to 10 milliamps. It looks okay to me. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention right in the beginning of this video, but I'm planning to do more sort of like data science on time series data. And I thought this is the best way to uh, gather actual time series data that I'm going to hook it up to 16 different circuits around my house. And I will try to be, you know, smart about like if I can make predictions on, let's say, if the fridge is on for too long or for too many times, or if there is an unusual power usage in one of the sockets or one of the rooms. So that was the main purpose. And, and of course, the implementation would need to take, well, would most probably going to take a couple of months by the time I get to install it and start working on the Arduino, sorry, the Node-RED logic. Going back to Arduino code. So you can see here that this is how I construct the JSON. I could have done it in a loop, but uh, I think once I install it, I'm going to just change these C01, C02s to actual um, names of the circuits, like, you know, kitchen or freezer or something like that. 
so I didn't want to have uh, some sort of pattern. But you can see the value here. If you want to play around with the frequency as well, you can uncomment this group and you will get the frequency as well. But as I said, for me, it was showing zero all the time and definitely code is right. So it's probably just not measuring it for whatever reason. But I bought it for the current measurement, so I'm perfectly happy with that. Just like with my other Arduino code, if you want to re-implement this code, you just go to the settings.h and then that's where you're going to find all the Wi-Fi settings, the MQTT settings. So you just um, change those and yeah, build, compile and upload the code. I haven't used anything specific for the Arduino settings or the board settings. So you can see my settings here, but uh, it's just general settings for a VMOS D1 Mini. So I think in a couple of months, when once I have it installed and I start playing around with the Arduino code, there is going to be an update on this. But for the time being, if you want a current measurement, and if you want, well, if you want lots of current measurement, I think this is a fairly, you know, reasonably priced model. Um, if you buy the Type 1, then it's just, well, 110 US, okay, there is some shipping as well. But I think this is definitely a good price and uh, this is an industrial grade model. So I have a little bit more confidence in the precision of this unit as opposed to if I want to build something with an ESP32 and use the analog inputs to measure current. Uh, maybe there is uh, there are other ways to do it. And if you, if you need fewer circuits, you can probably do cheaper as well. But I think for 16 circuits, this is uh, definitely a good price. So if you are interested in this project, you will find the code in the GitHub uh, that I linked in the video description. But I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.